Hey guys, it's Megan, and I'm not really sure what I'm going to call this video, but this week I decided to do sort of a thrift flip, but with clothes that I already had at my house. You guys know how I feel about long intros, so let's just get into it. The first thing that I found to make over was this oversized sweatshirt. This was actually one of those things that I bought for another project, but I never got around to it. I've been seeing so many people do embroidery lately, and I really wanted to try it, so that's what I did. First, I took some masking tape and made a line a little bit under where I wanted my design to go. Which, this is why I had so much trouble designing my merch, um, because you will see the design ended up being a little bit lower than I wanted it to because, you know, I don't really have boobs. But it was perfect for my sister, so maybe just like try it on and then put the tape like where you want it. I don't know. But anyways, next I took a white chalk pencil and drew some lines above the tape. These pencils are nice because the marks will just come out in the wash. And these will be the stems of your flowers. I did a chain stitch on each line to make the flower stems. For this stitch, bring your needle up through the back of your fabric. Then bring the needle back down right next to where you brought it up, creating a little loop like this. Bring your needle back up where you want the top of the loop to be. And now you have your first chain link. Repeat this process for the rest of the chain. Bring the needle back down through the top of the first loop, then back up to create your second loop. Continue this pattern, and when you're ready to finish the chain, instead of making another loop, you can just bring the needle right back down and tie it off at the end. Unless you want your stem to have leaves. In that case, make a few of those loops along the stem before you tie it off. Just bring the needle up and back down creating a loop, then back up and back down again to secure the end of it. I always find it easiest to work with one color at a time, so I finished all of the stems before I did the flowers. I wanted to make sure that they were all roughly the same size, so I went back and drew a circle on top of each stem with my chalk pencil. For the flowers, I did a lazy daisy stitch. This is actually kind of similar to the stems. Bring your needle up through the middle of that circle. Just like the chain stitch, bring it back down right beside that. Bring your needle back up at the edge of the circle then back down again to secure the petal. Repeat this stitch going the whole way around the circle. I gave my flowers eight petals each, but you can do as many as you want. When you finish the last petal, secure the thread in the back with a few knots. Since this was going on clothing, I did about three knots each time that I needed to secure a stitch. I did a French knot for the middle of each flower. Bring your needle up from the wrong side to the right side of your fabric. Wrap the thread around your needle a few times. I did mine six times. Hold the thread with your other hand and bring the needle back down super close to where we brought it up. And that's it. Peel off the tape and now you have a super cute embroidered sweatshirt. And these should be fine to put in the wash. Just put it in a garment bag before you wash it. I love this trend. I think embroidery is so pretty. It definitely took a little while to do since this was my first time embroidering anything, but each flower got a little bit easier. For my next project, I used this merch design that kind of failed. The design's okay, but the sweatshirt is literally see-through. I don't know how they managed to make a sweatshirt see-through, but needless to say, I don't sell this one. Um, and as some of you may know, I've been working on redoing my bedroom over the past few months. And I've been trying really hard not to buy anything new to decorate with. So I decided to turn this sweatshirt into a pillowcase. I had this sequin pillow from a while ago. The sequins are fun and all, but they are not super comfortable to sleep on. So I took the pillow out, measured it, and got to work. My pillow was 14 by 14 inches. So I cut out a square that was 15 inches by 15 inches for the front of the pillow. This will give me a half inch seam allowance. Honestly, I didn't really measure the back pieces super well. I just made sure that they were 15 inches on the side with the band and that they could overlap when you sit them on top of the front piece. If your shirt has a hem, I definitely recommend cutting these pieces from the bottom so that you don't have to worry about hemming any raw edges. Take your front piece with the right side facing up and place the two back pieces on top with the right sides facing down. Pin everything in place and sew along the edges. When you're done, flip the pillowcase back to the right side and that's it. Of course, I couldn't stop there though. I just got these new fabric markers from Arteza and I've been dying to test them out. I put a few pieces of cardstock inside my pillowcase so that the marker wouldn't bleed through, 
and taped it closed on the back so the fabric wouldn't slide around too much. I made marks that were two inches apart on each edge of the pillowcase, and connected the marks with a ruler to make a grid pattern. I've been wanting some grid pillowcases like this for a while, but the only ones I could find were on Amazon and they were like made out of that fabric that you would use like, you know, on your hammock, on your porch. And that fabric is not super comfy, so, you know, I did this. And if you want to make one of these but you don't have fabric markers, you could always use things like patches or iron on vinyl. Or if you have a darker shirt, you could always bleach dye it. I feel like that would look really cool. If your shirt has a graphic on it, you could also use that for the front of the pillow. So here's how my finished throw pillow turned out. It goes perfectly with the grid bedding that I have, and it was practically free to make. Arteza was super nice and offered to host a giveaway for this video. If you want to win a pack of these fabric markers, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel and to Arteza's channel and reply to the pinned comment with your Instagram username. I'll pick the winner next Friday, May 22nd, and I'll DM you to get your shipping info. Also, if you have any ideas for other projects that I can make with these, definitely let me know in the comments. The last clothing item that I decided to flip for this video was this old pair of leggings. And as you can see, they have a hole in them. It's not the best look, but I finally figured out what to do with these. I basically just cut off the legs and turned them into bike shorts. Now, I don't know who decided that these were trendy all of a sudden. You know, they're probably not. But I was ordering sweatpants from Victoria's Secret the other day, and they like really were trying to sell me some because they have those all over their website. So I marked where I wanted the shorts to hit with that white chalk pencil, and made a second mark about an inch under that so I'd know where to cut. I took the leggings off and folded them. You know like how you'll go to the Nike or the Under Armour store and they fold the shorts all weird on the hangers? Uh, yeah, fold it like that. Then I drew a line straight across and cut both legs along the line. Turn the leggings inside out and cuff the bottoms to create the hem. I knew that this probably wouldn't look so great if I tried to sew it, so I used this heat and bond soft stretch adhesive instead. I got this for about three or four dollars on Amazon. I just ironed the hem so I'd know where to put the tape and stuck it on according to the package directions. I ironed the tape for five seconds to get it to stick peeled off the paper, folded the hem back up, and ironed it for another 20 seconds to finish the shorts. And obviously, I did that for both of the legs. And here's how my finished shorts turned out. And you know what? I actually don't hate them. Throw on some Birkenstocks, an oversized shirt, and you know, I'm here for it. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one. My merch, my website, and all of my social media will be linked down below. Don't forget to enter the giveaway, and yeah, I love you guys so, so much, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!